All right. Yeah. So let's talk about this Cybertruck. I made I made a little video about the Cybertruck. Have you seen the Cybertruck? Do you have any strong opinions one way or the other about the Cybertruck? I have seen the Cybertruck. I really like I, I was trying to argue with one of my friends about getting it because he was interested in it. And I'm like, I, I really can't see a use case for it. Like, you might as yeah. well just go get an F1 because at least when you're talking about a truck, you want reliability. Mm -hmm. And why the hell would you go with this thing, which looks like it was rendered using a PS1 that <laughs> is completely untested? Right. And it's made by a company that has like zero experience making any sort of, you know, high lift trucks when you can just go get an F150. From well, it's, it's made by a company that is arguably the most hostile towards right to repair and self repairing that too. Um, in the history of vehicles. I mean, and, and like you said, with a truck, I, like the case that I was making in the video that I made about this like a couple weeks ago or last week was um, there's two types of people that buy trucks. OK, so there's people who buy it as like just a flex or whatever. So these are the kind of trucks that, you know, they never get mud on them. Like Yuki is covered in mud right now. We've had a lot of rain here and I've I've literally had to use my four wheel drive like on my farm almost every single day because I can't get up certain hills with two wheel. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's it's got mud on it. There's some scratches in it. There's all kinds of tools and nonsense in the um in the cab of my truck and like you know it's it's a certified snee truck it actually when i um took it to the shop to get inspected i had left a can of a relatively new can of wd-40 in the back and you know somehow with it getting moved around and stuff the whole can went off in the back seat of the truck so my truck straight up smells Ooh. like wd-40 <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it's it's lubed like a motherfucker but yeah like there's people who actually use trucks for blue collar work and if you're one of those people you're probably going to want to be able to fix your truck or at the very least you're going to want to be able to bring it to you know your neighborhood bubba in the neighborhood that can actually fix trucks and have him fix it and that's not going to happen with anything that tesla makes especially not this cyber truck um, the range on it is not great. Um, it's so the amount that it's able to tow, like, like when you, when you compare the amount that it can tow to its weight, um, it's, it's not a really good balance because this cyber truck weighs about as much as a, um, I think it's a super duty F 350 diesel, which can tow, I think, like 20,000 pounds, give or take. And this does, like, maybe a third of that. Now, there is one thing that I like about the Cybertruck, which is really, really dope, and that's the fact that the power output of it is enough to... You can literally use a Cybertruck as a backup generator for your home. Like, the, the amount of um, stored power that it contains, and, and also the... Output is high enough to run like an arc welder. I'm pretty sure that's something I can never do off of Yuki. Um, Yuki's power output is actually kind of annoying because she only does 100 watts um, when she's running, and then she does I think it's 500 watts idling. But I don't really like to use the power output when it idles because that's a great way to drain your battery. <laughs> because I don't have a giant battery pack in there. I just have a regular old car battery. Um, but yeah, like this, this headline right here pretty much goes to show you that when you buy something from Tesla, you really don't own it. So you don't have the right to repair it. You don't even have the right to resell it. So I guess all you can really do is cancel your pre-order if you don't want the Cybertruck, which a lot of people have done already. They canceled the pre-order because once again, it was over-promise and under-delivered. It was just... Ugh, not great. Not a great truck at all. You know, I always like Chevy trucks, but they're just so dang small. Why don't they make them normal sized? Well, miss, we did just that. Introducing the all new Chevy Goliath. It's not just a truck, it's a lifestyle. 
Yeah, I remember that. I mean, that's kind of my problem, though, with, with most electric cars. Is that. Oftentimes it requires like a special software or firmware kit from the manufacturer to actually repair it. So if you decide to push for all electric, you're going to really run the risk of getting rid of a lot of local blue collar work because they're either not going to be able to pay however much it costs for the licensing and the training and the equipment from the manufacturer to use their diagnostic kit or they're going to have to increase prices or people will just go to the manufacturer because they can do it for free or faster. And that, yeah. I mean, most electric cars require that shit nowadays because like they just have a very complicated built-in computer system. Unlike my car, which is just like a normal 2005 car that has some electronics, but you can fix it pretty normally by yourself or at, at a repair person. Yeah, I think my, my truck's pretty simple there too. Pretty sure Yuki runs Windows 95. Easy peasy. <laughs> Yeah, and then there's like the issues with charging. I mean, that's that's probably gonna start to get mitigated in the future. I mean, I don't know how long it's gonna take for charging stations to reach my neck of the woods because like they don't they don't exist in Southern Virginia as far as I know. Like the <clears throat> when we went to go to my um to uh, my sister's proposal party in Williamsburg, I don't think we even saw. A Tesla until we got over the James, the, the bridge that goes across the James River. So it's like, yeah, you got to be, you got to be in the city. Um, let me see. Last night when I went to Colonial Heights, I don't think I saw any Teslas. I don't know if there's like Tesla chargers in Colonial Heights. Like, yeah, they're just not, they're not back here in this neck of the woods. But I mean, like I said, that might get mitigated in the future. There's also, um, I don't think I pulled it for this uh podcast but i remember seeing a headline about a road that they're building in detroit where i think it's supposed to charge a electric vehicle as you drive over it so that that's pretty dope if if it works you know the way that i remember the headline reading If you got to park, then it might be a problem because parking in Detroit is not a wise uh, thing to do unless you want all your wheels and your fancy battery. And your... So someone's going to steal the AI out of your cyber truck for full self-driving and they're going to shove that bitch in a 96 Honda Civic <laughs> just to see what happens. Wasn't that a plot of Robocop? Um, it might have been. 